Number 24. The surface tension and viscosity values for diethyl ether, acetone, ethanol, and ethylene glycol are shown here in this chart. And then we have letter A. So it says explain their differences in viscosity in terms of the size and the shape of their molecules and their IMFs, which is intermolecular forces. All right. So for letter A, we are just looking at this uh, column here for viscosity. And we are basically going to describe why is the viscosity changing in terms of size and shape um, of the molecules and their intermolecular forces. Okay. So for letter A, it seems that the way that this is written is that they have the lowest viscosity value on the top so the, mo the least viscous, or the lowest viscosity, all the way down to the highest viscos viscosity. Now, remember, a viscosity is ranked in terms of a resistance to flow. So uh, liquid's viscosity is basically just a measure of how resistant to flow a liquid is. So the two extremes that I like to give is water versus honey. Water, if you have a water bottle out on your desk or wherever you are, if you are, you know, flipping that water bottle all over the place, the water is flipping all over the place with you, right? It's right there with you. It is not resistant at all. So water is relatively has a low viscosity as opposed to honey, right? When you're sick and you want tea with honey, which is my personal favorite, um, takes so long for that honey to drip out of the bottle. That's high viscosity. It is, does not want to flow. It is so resistant to flow. That's a high, uh, viscous substance. So in terms of these values, diethyl ether would flow the most. So it has a high flow as opposed to ethylene glycol, which has the highest viscosity, it has the lowest flow. Which means that it's going to take very long to flow, right? It's kind of like the honey idea. But now, why is this change? Well, we got to look at the structure and the shapes and the sizes of the intermolecular forces. Now, the first thing that I see right off the bat is I see this red uh, molecule right here. And the red molecule is um, oxygens. So I have an oxygen here. I have an oxygen here. I got an oxygen here, an oxygen here, and then an oxygen here. Now, there is one intermolecular force that makes your viscosity way, 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 way high. And this is your hydrogen bonding. The more intermolecular forces that you have, the more resistant you are to flow which will make you the lowest flow or flow very slowly. So I'm looking out for those hydrogen bonding intermolecular forces. And in this case, your hydrogen bonding is coming from a OH bond and the white bulbs here are hydrogens. So I have an OH bond here. I have two OH bonds here. This has an oxygen, but it does not have an OH. This has an oxygen, but it does not have an OH. So I'm just going to highlight these because maybe we can see a trend here. That as you go from top to bottom, you are gaining in hydrogen bonding. I mean, the, the, the bottom two, you have one hydrogen bond versus two, and that greatly jacks up the viscosity. So we could say the more hydrogen bonding, so the more hydrogen bonding, the higher the viscosity. As we can see here, these don't have any hydrogen bonding, so they have the lowest viscosity. Now also, as you are adding more hydrogen bonding as well, you are gaining in polarity 
meaning that asymmetricalness. You're going from something that is kind of kind of nonpolar, but it's still it's still classified as polar because you have that oxygen that has the lone pairs in the middle. But you're gaining in polarity as you go down. So I can add one more thing. So the more hydrogen bonding, the higher the viscosity and the higher polarity, which also means that you have more high higher polar character. Which just means that you're more polar. It's a fancy way for saying you're more polar. Um, and now, in terms of size and shape, well, it seems here that as you're going down, you're becoming like a, you know, a, a bigger size. You know, we have two oxygens here as opposed to just one oxygen, one oxygen, and one oxygen. So we could also say that chances are you're going to be more viscous if you have a greater uh, shape or size as well. And that's it for letter A. Now, we have to do the same thing, but now we just have to talk about it in terms of their differences in surface tension, in terms of the size and the shape of their molecules and their intermolecular forces. But, I mean, if I'm looking at it here, 17 is the lowest surface tension leading up to the highest surface tension. So this would be the lowest surface tension, and this would be the highest surface tension. Now, surface tension is basically just a measurement of how much of a force you would need to break like a layer of your molecules. And the same exact thing that we discussed here. If you have the highest intermolecular force, which is hydrogen bonding, you are making a very, very, very um, tight network. And you're going to have a high surface tension to kind of break that network. So it's the same type of flow. So for B, I can just say the same exact thing. So the more hydrogen bonding, the more of an army you're making because you're forming attractions between multiple uh, molecules that are the same. So you will have a high surface tension. Which, just like we said before, generally means that your polarity is going to be pretty high as well. This, the other way for saying a high polarity is just talking about it in terms of polar character. And just like we basically said before, that also, the higher the shape, the higher the size, the higher molecular mass, um, the, the higher the surface tension as well. So we can group all of them together. And that's it. B is done. What'd you think? I hope this helped. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for, you know, coming here for, you know, to get help in your classes. Check out the channel because we also have physics and math videos on the channel at the moment with more subjects in the future. Um, thank you for being part of this community. And I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad that we can help you out in your classes. And I'll be talking to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.